So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, this is a quick guide. If you haven't heard of this, the EPRRC and what used to be called the MKTS has transitioned over to a new way to study exactly what you need to know for the PDG. So EPRRC is your SKT, and then you have the actual Air Force Handbook Study Guide, if you will. It's called something else, and we'll get into it in a second. What used to be MKTS, but now it's called something different on exactly what you need to know to study for PDG. So with that said, we're going to hop over, and we're first going to take over, talk about the enlisted promotions, references, and requirements catalog, right? So this is your roadmap for studying the SKT. And every career field has their own um, roadmap, if you will. And I'm going to talk about POL a little bit because it's what I know. That's what I was before CAA. But every AFSC has their own version of this in this catalog. So first step to actually find this EPRRC, you got to go to MIPERS. Click on promotion, and that's going to take you to the next page. You're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you're going to find the enlisted promotions, references, and requirements catalog. So here it is. And this is for 2021. And this is for senior airmen testing to staff and staff's test testing to tech. So right now, before we go to POL, I'm just going to scroll down and show you. It's every AFSC, essentially, in the Air Force. So we'll find 2FO. 2FO 71. There we go. So when you look here, this is telling me that 23201 is a AFI that we have to know in POL. Your AFIs are going to be different and they'll be listed up here, right? So now 23201, if you're not POL, this thing is, uh, it's not massive, but it's got a lot of information in there. So why would you go through and, and study the entire AFI when it's only going to have chapters two through nine and attachments one, six, eight, nine, and 10 that are actually going to be testable? So you're not going to see these other chapters or attachments or anything else in your AFI or TO that's going to be testable for SKT. So if you know this, it's, it allows you to get straight to the point and to study things that are actually going to be on the test. And it applies to every AFSC. So for instance, let's just click on 1Charlie8. Nothing. So basically what this means is that they probably have like maps and all sorts of other weird things that they have to do. I'm not sure off the top of my head if you are the AFSC. Uh, post a comment below. Let's go to 2Alpha5. So 2Alpha572. Jesus, that's a lot. Okay. So 21101, chapters 1 through 9 and chapter 11. 21103, chapter 2, AFI 362650, chapters 1, 3, and 8. And this same rule applies to every single AFSC um, that you, you would be looking at. So this isn't just a specific AFSC. This applies to all of you guys that are tested to staff and tech. Just find your AFSC, click on it, and then it'll tell you exactly what you need to know. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the Enlisted Promotion Study Guide. Uh, basically, what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to type in studyguides.af.mil. And this is what is going to tell you that you need to know for the PFE or PDG or Air Force Handbook. It's been called those, all those things throughout the year, right? So you've got SKT, and then you've got the Air Force Handbook. So what you're going to want to know is you're going to want to go to Enlisted Promotion Study Guides on this website. And then you have Study Guides for 2019. Testing to staff, or are you testing to tech? Let's say you're testing to staff, so let's click on that. And then you can download this study guide. 
So click on it. And this is called the Airman Development and Testing Chart. This used to be called MKTS, uh, not even really back in the day, but I'll say back in the day. In the PDG, it would be towards the back or whatever, and it would show you what you need to study for that upcoming cycle. Uh, but basically, what you're looking at right here is your scale, A, B, C, and D, and then your level of comprehension, remembering, understanding, applying, and analyzing. So obviously, A is going to be an easier question than D. But the best advice I can give you here is I'm going to throw out a, a stat that do not take this to the bank because it's completely false. I don't know what it is, but 1% of people can read something and they can retain that like forever. I'll tell you, me personally, I'm not that guy at all. I never have been. Um, so I had to write, when I was testing for staff sergeant, when I was testing for tech sergeant, I had to write flashcards. And when I made tech sergeant, it was in 2014, I think it was, but it was like right during the time when the Air Force was really drawing down and you had to have really high scores. And I want to tell people this, that it doesn't matter uh, how smart you think you are or you're not. What matters is how much work you put into this. So I wrote, I think it was 3,500 or close to 4,000 flashcards. And I got an 85% on my SKT. And I didn't study the PDG really at all. And I ended up getting like a 66 on that. Um, and I barely made tech. I think it was by like four or five points or something like that. But I want you to know that I am a person that almost failed out of high school, right? And then whenever I came into the military, I was not successful. And it wasn't until really after my first enlistment that I really started to buckle down. And you might feel like this is incredibly hard to do, but if you take the time and you study, like, if you don't make this stripe, you're getting kicked out the following year. You've hit higher tenure. If you treat it like that and you write flashcards on every single thing that we just talked about with EPRRC and what we're going to talk about right here, if you write flashcards on every single one of these um, and don't miss anything, and let's say you get to 3,500 to 4,000, your chances of making staff are just absolutely exponential. And it and that's regardless of a promotion statement. These days, everybody says like, oh, I got to get a must promote. I got to get a promote now. And I can't tell you that that is not farther from the truth. It's going to help you depending on your career field, yes. Because when you make a stripe, um, they are basically looking at your career field as a whole and seeing how many open positions there are. So if you get a promote now, is that going to help you? Absolutely. But that also means that if you get a must promote or a promote now, you really should be studying like I'm telling you right now, like because that will almost guarantee you your stripe. I've seen quite a few people uh, over the years since this has been implemented to where they got a pr must promote or a promote now, thought they had it in the bag and then didn't study as hard as they should have and then didn't make the stripe, you know? So why work? that hard all year and not put in the work to study. I mean, your promotion is really in your hands. So going down to the second part of this though, you're gonna see uh, what we had talked about up here, A, B, C, D. And then you're gonna see here, your A's, your B's. These are all B's, 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 B's. B, B, and keep scrolling down, right? And then there's one C. So this tells me right now that Section 25, Charlie, Air Force core values. The Air Force as a whole wants to know, wants you to know this at a C level applying, right? So carrying out or using a procedure through executing or implementing. Uh, basically, when you applying relates to or refers to situations where learned material is used through products like models, presentations, interviews, or simulations. So if you're testing for staff, and you've gone through ALS, you know that ALS asks questions on their tests that you know two or three answers might be the right answer, but which one is the most right answer? And that's why you really need to, in, in my personal opinion, is write flashcards on these, on these topics, right? So when you're going through the Air Force Handbook, you can see that there's going to be questions or possibly questions 
out of section two Charlie, three Alpha, four Alpha, four Bravo, four Charlie, four Delta, four Echo, and then goes down the list. And it tells you at what level you need to know these things. I would say, who cares what level you need to know it at, whether it's A, B, C, or D, treat them all like they're Ds and write flashcards on these things. Because if you treat, if, if you do too much, it's better to do that and to score just crazy high versus just breezing over it real quick and not getting a high enough score and then you miss the cutoff. So for those people that are watching and that do understand how this works and that do know what the EPRRC is and the new testing guide, uh, I'll tell you, it takes a ton of time and a ton of of effort that people don't even realize sometimes to make rank for for staff and tech and then now going to master is a completely different ball field right so if when you go up for master now you already need to be thinking about that as a staff and a tech sergeant what are you doing to set your records up and then that's whenever it comes to sustained superior performance uh, you need to be PCS in a lot you need to be finding ways to to innovate save time money equipment reallocate manpower and all your bullets on your awards need to need to say those things right and you need to be thinking about um awards for your eprs you know and that is basically going to be the differentiator uh, until the air force figures out a better way to to promote so that, in a nutshell, is what these two study guides are. Just know that if you want the stripe and you got to promote, you can make that stripe all day, every day um, with a promote if you study your butt off. So is it going to be easier with a must promote and a promote now? Absolutely, because you're going to get more points. But you can make those points up by a factor of like two or three times just by taking the time to study. And now is the time because if you're studying for staff sergeant, you're probably going to be taking your test around, I would say, March through April-ish time frame. And then tech is, I think, about the same time. So um, right now is the time to start. Thanks for watching, guys.